Hello and welcome to my video at long last. It's been a while, hasn't it? Um, and a lot of people have been asking me, where have I been? Well, I, I've been in hospital because um, uh, you may notice that my voice is slightly different and that's due to, um, well, basically a loss of energy. I suddenly, um, well, let me, no, let me start from the beginning again. Okay. Um, I've been feeling a bit tired for quite a long time, uh, but suddenly, around about the middle of November, I was teaching uh, a Zoom class, and I noticed that um, about halfway through, I just ran out of air. I just couldn't breathe. My breathing went really tight and quite uncomfortable. So um, I went to see my doctor, probably the next day, I think it was, and he did a quick test on my heart and then he had me straight off to hospital and uh, turns out I have congestive heart failure which um, is a pain in the rear to put it mildly I wasn't expecting that but as I said when I think back I think I've had some of these uh, symptoms for quite some time so I guess it's going to build up and eventually come to a point when it's going to say, slow down. And it did. It screamed at me. So off I went to hospital. Really boring, quite tedious. I, I feel deeply sorry for people who have this problem. Um, worse than I have. I mean, I have... It's bad enough for me. And, uh, you know, but there are people much worse off. So the thing to do, I suppose, is think positively. And what I'm going to try and do is, um, it's going to sound really crazy this, but back in the early 70s, I had a cold. It sounds silly to remember a cold that you had back in the early 70s, but it was, um, I just started my first real job as a, a designer. And I was working for a company that produced technical drawings and, uh, you know, being one of the pathologically shy, I was shoved into a room with 15 other artists, designers, and uh, not really feeling awfully comfortable. While I go on about this story, I'll just tell you what I'm doing here. This is, um, it's just, I'm sort of just going to paint as we, as I talk, really. That's, um, that's pale blue, red ochre, tiny bit of sap green, uh, paints grey, um, ultramarine blue, that's about it really. And I just sort of threw them together and um, made this really interesting sort of grey, which I think looks like hills in the distance with snow on them. So I'm just going to sort of just chuck something in to get started on. I think we'll have a line sort of across there. And then I'm going to do something down here, which a lot of people seem to like. I'm going to have fields, but I'm going to put this, my nice curl, well, I think it's nice, my sort of curled path with water or melted snow leading you into the picture. So once I've got this hill thing sort of just roughly mapped out here, I'm going to chuck in a quick sky. Anyway, back to, um, back to the health problem. Yeah, I, had, I was shoved into a studio with all these other highly experienced designers, and I, I caught a cold, and I, it was just like the most unbelievably horrible cold. I don't like having, well, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't like having colds, and particularly to um, be honking and snorting all over the place with a bunch of people you don't know. It's just like, yeah, it's way out of my comfort zone. So um, uh, I'd had a couple of colds before then in my life, but, uh, you know, flu I'd had big time, but this particular cold, oh God, it was terrible. Sore throat, runny nose, the, the works. When it was over with, I, just, I said to myself, well, I'm, that was horrible, I'm not doing that again. And you, would you believe it? I have never had a cold since. I've had flu, proper flu. No, I'm not talking about man flu here. I'm talking about flu, flu, where you have a high temperature and del delirium and all the other pleasant things that go with it. It was revolting, horrible stuff, you know. Anyway, um, so did I, did I trigger something in my mind that 
prevented me from catching colds. I have absolutely no idea, but it worked. So, um, as they say in England, if it works, don't knock it. So knock it, I will not. And um, so, yeah, I've had uh, flu. Maybe I should have said, I'm not having flu again. But anyway, I said I'm not having cold again. That was just revolting, disgusting. So maybe I should ad ad adopt the same thing, the same mindset about this deeply unpleasant condition I find myself in now. And uh, maybe it'll work. Maybe I should say, right, congestive heart failure. Don't want that. That can go away. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But of course, if you don't try, you don't know, do you? Now, uh, if you find yourself in the same position as me, Listen to your doctor, don't listen to me. It's just my way of going about things. I don't offer medical help. Right, so this is getting interesting. I'm quite, um, oh, just to, so I can prattle on about something. I was quite amazed that uh, all the things they do to you in hospital, all the tests they run and stuff. And I have this, you won't see it, I'm sure you won't, but there's a little dot on my wrist, just there, a little round red mark. And they shove this thing up through the vein all the way across my chest to take a look at my heart. Quite amazing. And you don't feel it. You just don't feel anything. Quite, quite strange. Fascinating, but I'm in no hurry to repeat it. So what have we got here anyway? Let's see. We've got a sort of misty sort of landscape across there. We've got a few trees sort of in the mid mid foreground. So I'll put look in the camera. Oh, it's okay. And I'm gonna put a bit of snow on the hills, um, and then I'm gonna just let rip with the sky. But I think the ground down here could be, could be, let me think, it could have, could have a bit of yellow ochre in it. As if it's farmland that's um, resting. Farmland in repose. Let's just get something across there that gives a hint of that. So while I was in hospital, I sort of, I had a sketchbook, I did a few doodles. But I have to say it wasn't in the foremost thing in my mind. The foremost thing was, will I still be here tomorrow morning? That does really sort of focus you on that thought. And I, I thought, well, I don't like this. This is like, I, I, what I didn't want to do, you see, was get depressed. I'm quite aware that if you have something wrong with your ticker, one, things, one thing that you do want to do is stay as calm as possible and not get in a stew about anything. Um, easier said than done, of course. But it is important, I think, to try and control your, your thoughts as much as possible. Don't don't let things get to you if you can at all avoid it, because it won't do any good. I I, I worked on convincing myself that the worst thing I can do is overthink it. What I should be doing is trying to underthink it and just let go and relax. And I'm sort of, I, I think I'm getting to the point now where I can do that. Um, it plays havoc with your sleep patterns. But anyway, I've got that under control, I think, now. And the main thing is, I think, 
be calm. Be as calm as you can. Okay, so what we've got here, he said, being calm. Um, we've got this sort of farmland type scenario. I just want to, uh, because I stand over on the left here and I'm really, you know, trying to keep out of your way as usual. It's hard to get a, a horizontal line. I could have drawn it beforehand and just put a pencil line on there, but uh, I don't usually do that. So I won't. So all I'm doing is balancing between my finger and the, uh, balancing, measuring. That is totally, completely way out. So let's not fret. Let's just put a sort of slightly misty line along that. Fret. Fret free painting. So we've got a hint of the landscape, something going on there, something a bit misty, a little bit mysterious. I'm going to leave these white bits up here. In fact, uh, but I, what I will do, I'm going to just get a hint of this colour in the hill. Doesn't have to be much. And the other thing I'm going to try and do is get this landscape to be a little bit lighter than they usually are for me. I tend to go for quite high contrast, but I'll, I think I might just keep that for the sky. So just putting a, a little bit of this colour here, which is uh, yellow ochre, just get a little bit in the sky, in the sky, uh, in the hill. And soon I'll be going over that with a palette knife and some white to give a snowy effect. So there we go. Now, let's just have a little play with a palette knife, just for the heck of it. See, this is a this is a hopefully non-stress painting. I don't I don't particularly stress when I paint. In fact, I feel better when I start painting. Um, it is it is my meditation. So let's see what we can do with a snow effect. I'll just start the snow effect. I won't go all the way up to the top of these hills. Uh, because the sky, when I put it in, will be interrupting. Interrupting? Interacting. It's probably the word I wanted. With the, um, with the hills. So here's a bit of white. Let's just put a few marks on the hill. Just to sort of sculpt the shape of the hill a little bit. And I think a bit of snow. I think a little bit here on the ground. Do I want that stronger? Maybe I do. Oh, ah, right, I have to mention this. Something, something that I will announce later in this video is the winner of this painting here, which hopefully will appear on the screen. And um, this is something I, I got this set up before I went into hospital. And all you had to do, all people had to do was to comment subscribe to my channel, which is always good. And um, just leave a comment. And uh, I, I used a, um, a number generator to pick a winner. Now, I, I did look at some software to actually choose a name, but what I did, I converted people to numbers. The software that wanted me to pick a commenter, in other words, it went seeking. I put in the URL, it goes off seeking the uh, a random comment, and then that's your winner. Now, I decided to abort that because the bit of software wanted me to grant permission for it to delete videos, add videos, in fact, delete my channel if it felt like it, uh, all kinds of very strange things. Um, so I thought, no, absolutely not. I'm not risking my channel. Um, so I found another way of doing it. Let's have a nice bit of white just there. And I think it's, um, 
I'm sure you probably understand, you know, why would I want to risk my channel suddenly being deleted by a bit of, by some kind of app? It's not going to happen. So anyway, I, I have the winner. And as I said, you'll know about that a little later. So snow. Snow is definitely um, appearing in quite a few of my paintings at the moment. Let's just have a few more streaks on the hill there. In fact, I think I'm going to use the palette knife to mix up another colour that is between the general hill colour and the trees. The trees are just um, basically it's all the same colour, just with a little bit more uh, sap green thrown in. In fact, I might even just strengthen a few bits here. just to give some tree shapes. And structure. There we go. So I'm mixing the sort of bluey gray sort of color with a little bit more green. I'm just gonna add a little bit more of that just in here. The other thing I did in the hospital is um, I doodled with a ballpoint pen, a biro, and uh, I drew a tree. And when I find that, I'll put that on the screen as well, so you can see that. And I, I had another little competition running, uh, and that was, um, you know, to get people to do their own doodle of a tree and send it to me. And, uh, and then I would choose a winner and the winner would get my sketch. And there are some quite interesting uh, pictures. So um, I'll see if I can get that in as well. If not, uh, it'll be a new video. And, um, whoops. So that you have a few more things to look at rather than just one, one sort of hello I'm back video. You get a little bit more. A little bit more um, variation. Okay, so what are we going to do here? Let's have a, bit, a little bit of snow there on the side of that hill. Coming down there. Okay. Now then, snow in the foreground. What should we do? Of course, I'm talking to myself here. Just bumbling away. Um, a bit of snow in the foreground. Maybe there's uh, maybe there's going to be some lines coming across across the field. In fact, I think what I'll do is going to smudge smudge this a little bit. While I'm smudging, um, so that I don't have to remember to tell everyone at the end. If you want to, um, if you want to attend one of my Zoom classes, uh, feel free to contact me, or just go to my Facebook page. In fact, if you go there, you'll see a link. That one will pop up soon for lessons in um, January. There will be two. It's probably going to be two a month. Um, at the moment, I, I don't know the dates, but I will very soon. And uh, yeah, it'll be announced on my Facebook page. Okay, let's just crisp that up a bit. Right, so what can we do? What you want to do when you, when you sort of just bumbling around like this, just making stuff up. Um, you've got to think about how you're going to draw people in, how you're going to make the picture interesting. Um, and the way I do it, there's, there's several ways. 
to give people little places to go. So for instance, right, so what have we got? We've got a line of sort of misty trees, we've got these hills, we're going to have a sky any minute now. Um, let's have some snow on the hills, very, very quickly put in, just literally that, that's all you need, because you're not painting snow, of course, you're painting the illusion of snow from a distance. And that's hopefully what we're getting. And I'm going to make the sky slightly darker. To get that dark colour, I think I will use, first of all, a new brush. As usual, standard cheap brush. This is eight centimetres in width. And um, for my friends in America, that's uh, three inches wide, and it's um, probably a quarter of an inch thick. And uh, let's see, what should we use? I've got the colour that uh, I used here, that sort of greyish colour, and I want, to, I want to keep the same sort of feel, but I just want it to be slightly darker and a bit bluer, so I'm going to just add a little bit of um, Payne's Grey and a little bit of Ultramarine and then just put some colour on just as a test, see what it's like. Oh yeah, that's good. That's what I want. Okay, not much oil, it's just a little bit in there. I want it, this is quite a dry, what I would call a dry painting. I don't want it uh, drippy. If it was a very dark sort of picture, I think I would probably um, put in a lot more oil, but uh, this is going to be quite dry. So, a little bit more ultramarine. Almost, almost finished on the ultramarine. This is all I've got left. And it's not a colour I use much, and that tube's probably last me about three or four years, I think. Okay, now. Ultramarine blue. Let's see what we can do. I want to give the feeling that there's a lot more snow in the sky and it's going to be coming soon. So let's just go along this ridge line a bit. It doesn't matter what happens to the ridge line at the moment because um, I'll be working on them, the sky and the land together in a minute to get them to sort of meld and look as though they're vaguely related to each other. By that, of course, meaning you know that the colours are sort of in key. And obviously, I'm working down so that I can see what's happening down here. It would be silly to do that, because I'd be covering up the, um, the land. It doesn't matter what happens up here regarding brush marks. All absolutely, completely flexible. have a little stand back, see what we're getting. Okay, yes, so I used my um, camera uh, viewfinder as a sort of, uh, well, it's a painting aid because it means that I can just sort of turn around, glance at the viewfinder and see what the painting looks like a long way away because it's so small. So you get to see the bits that are um, interesting and the bits that aren't actually making any kind of impact. So this is very thin paint, as you can probably tell. It, uh, I think to you it looks as though it's got some nice, quite interesting variations of blue. Well, it does actually, yeah. 
um, with lots of sort of brush marks and scrape marks everywhere. Uh, but they, they don't matter, it doesn't matter at all. They enhance the picture. Try to, uh, you know, <laughs> follow, follow my brainwashing. Basically, um, you know, paint the picture. Paint it for you, don't, don't paint it for anyone else. You're the one that needs to be happy with it. If you're one of these people who paint commissions, you know, someone has ordered something, I suppose it's a little bit different. You've got to think what, what, the, what the buyer wants. Um, I don't do commissions. Uh, not anymore. If somebody's interested in a painting, uh, I usually just sort of let them ask me. I don't actively try and sell any of my work. Not, not, I'm not really interested. Um, I, I'm more than happy just making videos. And now that I'm back into it again, I'll do my best to not keep you waiting quite so long. Take some... It doesn't... Uh, start again. It doesn't take long, which I find is quite interesting. I don't mean to sound depressing. But if you don't upload, if you are a YouTuber and you don't upload something for a month, your statistics just plummet. Because YouTube, of course, is a business and they want to attract advertising. So if you don't put up new content, you basically get forgotten. They stop recommending your page. Um, it's not a conscious... <laughs> They're not sort of picking on you. I guess it's just the algorithm. It uh, has to be automated because of the amount of people uh, who actually put up videos. It's a phenomenal amount. And, and for probably in the time that I've uh, got this far in this painting, uh, on the planet there's probably been hundreds, if not thousands, of videos uploaded. Okay, so mustn't take it personally. So what I what I've got, what I'm thinking now, before I do much more to the sky, is just a little bit of scumbling along the edge of this of the hills, just to pull the sky and the hill together and tidy up any little untidy bits. And I think um, just make it a bit more. Interesting, along that edge. Dead simple, anyone, anyone can do this, you could do this. If you think you can't, um, how do I break it to you? Um, you're wrong, you can do this. It's just a question of um, a little bit of practice and an awful lot of, awful lot of relaxing and knowing you can do it. And while I'm trying to know that I can do it, I need to try and figure out where I know I left that brush that I want to use next. It's here somewhere. Let's have a little scout around. Okay. Here's a brush. Okay, so, nice big brush. And the only reason I want to use this is to take away a few brush marks in the sky, which is done like that. Just a little bit of smoothing, nothing much. And I sort of followed the hill a bit there, again, it doesn't matter. Quick wipe. Picked up a little bit of paint on that, but... Um, Got rid of that. So back to the top of the hills. Now the, the way I'm going to do this is with a palette knife and just white paint. I'm just going to put a little bit of snow along there. I know I'm in the way, I do apologise. Just a little bit of contrast there. And um, uh, 
That means the palette knife is now grubby. And I don't want it to be grubby, I want it clean. So what I'm going to try and do now is just pull some of this paint over that way. So I'm going to try and sculpt the top of the hill a little bit. And see what interesting things I can make happen just by running my um, palette knife back and forth just a few times up and down, down like so, sort of thinking about the shape of the hill. And th you have to look intensely at the marks that you are making and understand exactly when to stop. If you don't, you end up with mush. And the thing I'm after is lots of little bits of contrast. Quick look at the knife and you can see that it's gone uh, totally the wrong colour. So quick wipe back onto the white part that I've put here and then just push that down slightly to the left. So we're sort of um, building up snow on the hills. So the, this is the simple way to do an impression of a, a landscape like this. Let's have a little bit of a let's have a little bit of contrast just coming down there, I think. This is um this is the sort of compositional thing. This is the this is the sort of stuff that you do when you when you get into the painting and start to forget the real world. Uh, you see, normally I would um, be having I would be listening to music so that I get totally absorbed. Um, I can't do that when I'm making a video like this uh, because the copyright. I would have to have paid for the music. And, and a lot of people don't want to hear music anyway. They want to hear what I'm, they want to know what I'm thinking as I'm painting. Um, and I think if I, if I was just listening to music, uh, my mind would be in a place that I probably can't even begin to explain because it, it would sort of go abstract, I suppose. All kinds of things would be passing through my mind about life, the universe and everything, and my past life and what I did, what I didn't do, what I wish I'd done, all that sort of stuff. But when it's um, when I'm doing this sort of thing, uh, I have to try and I have to try and imagine my own music. And uh, that's an interesting thought. me anyway. <laughs> I always have to add those little um, disclaimers because sometimes people aren't going to find anything I think interesting. Now let's see what should we do up here. Let's have a little bit of a little bit of contrast against the sky. And there's no reason. I just like it. Now here, I've got, I've got quite a lot. I've got this lump of tree here, uh, and then there's board. There's some paint there, but awful lot of this white is just the board showing through. And I think I want to. Um, I'm going to instead of a brush, I'm going to palette knife some colour. 
onto that just to see what happens. I'm really, I'm really into it. Let's just see what happens. It's, if you, if you are doing um, something like this, if you're painting an imaginary picture, I think it's actually a good thing to do that. So to just see what happens, just experiment. As I usually say, what's the worst thing that can happen? Well, the worst thing that can happen is it won't quite go according to plan. And then all you have to do is just get some of this and um, take it off. But of course you may not have to. It may, it may just look interesting. Let's see, let's try and do something interesting over there in a minute. But here, I think, before we go on, I'm just going to um, just put a little bit of colour through there. I really hope I'm out of the way. Am I out of the way? Well, I think you saw some of that. I'm going to move the camera over there in a minute so you get a, an alternative view. Um, so these colours that I'm using here, in fact any minute now, as it's you, I'm going to move the camera and you can have a look at my palette. But I just want to get, just want to get something down here. Just a few random bits of something. Not quite sure what they are. But So over on the right hand side there, I'm going to add a little bit of, in fact it's almost the same colour as the sky, but I just want to get some darker tone just on the board, just around here, so that I can make it into something else. And also it'll bring the bottom of the hill closer to us. So I've got some blue on there, bluey grey. So now I'm going to just put a bit of green in it. Just see what what it looks like. It looks like that. Just a bit darker. And in a minute, I'm going to start working in that with palette knife. This is just to get some tones on. I don't really care what it looks like. And I can see there's a few accidental things in there that I quite like. I like this, um, this bit of light here. I mean, I did put that on, that was deliberate, but some of the things that are happening in there are quite sort of, quite accidental. Let's see, what, should we, what shall we do? I think we get a little bit of brown. I'm at the stage now where my palette starts to look interesting. Which is good because you can you can see stuff on your palette and uh, some shapes and you think mm, that's how you get that I'll do that on the painting quite uh, quite a good little exercise in how to keep observing things now I'm putting I'm putting a sort of brownie color on there you won't see much maybe I don't know yeah, it sort of shows up Just smooth that all down and run it up into the hill a few times like that. Just to see, as we said a minute ago, see what happens. Okay, some nice, quite interesting textures going on there. I think it might need a bit of snow. So the thing I suppose that you might pick up from this, I hope, is that um, if you want to paint snow, you don't have to sort of 
first of all, you don't have to use a brush. Um, you don't have to sort of carefully structure your snow, particularly when it's in the distance, because it's so far away, you wouldn't see it anyway. So you just get a feeling. You get a feeling for what may be there and what may not be there. A line. Let's just have a shape. Something coming across the foreground towards you. And of course, if you do get that, it's going to get wider as it gets closer to you. So let's uh, let's not be shy. That's a mark on the ground that uh, is affecting the snow. And let's have, um, let's do, a, let me see, let's do a, I did mention this earlier, I did say that I would do a sort of curling effect. Let's just put something in just to see what, whether it looks like farm tracks. A little hint of something. It's all just to draw the eye up. Uh, into the painting. Uh, so we've got this curly thing here, it's just a hint of something on the ground. Of course if you just paint the ground as just flat colour it's going to be really boring. So um, it's always good to, to observe, you know, go out and look at some fields and see what marks are left on it from farming and agricultural pursuits. Sounds like a hobby, doesn't it? Um, so what I'm doing is using the shapes on the ground to draw people up into the picture. That's that's the theory anyway. It works usually, but you have to do you have to be bold and try and do it as quickly as you can in one motion. It, um, it mustn't look as though you've hesitated too much and also accentuate some bits like for instance the turn there where that that bend happens you notice I've just sort of made it slightly more contrasty just to, to bring attention to it and I think um, down here I'm going to widen this Okay, right, so I think we'll have to go up to the sky in a moment, but um, before we go there... I just want to... Um, strengthen the snow on the ground there just a little bit. There we go. And then a few descriptive marks on the hill. So in other words, let's sort of mould, mould the mountain, just sort of pull it around and down. You know, it's like a you make mountain movements with your hand. Mountain descriptive marks. see what we can do here to make this a little bit, look a little bit more perky. I'm not after um, uh, Alps here, I'm just, it's, just a, it's just a hill or a few hills. Or are they mountains? I don't know. What's the difference between a hill and a mountain? I'm sure that a mountain is probably bigger than a hill. So these are, I don't know, biggish, biggish hills. Right, okay. I think just a few more marks across the foreground and then I'm going to um, work on the sky and then I'll tell you who the winner is of the um, painting, which is this one again, I'll just show you again. And I hope you enjoy the painting. Oh, and um, one thing I have to say, um, 
the person. You must, you must contact me as soon as you hear that you've won because um, if for some reason I can't get hold of you or maybe you don't have a YouTube channel anymore or something, um, if, if I don't hear from you in, um, I think probably a week, uh, then I'll have to um, find another winner. So you've got to keep your eyes open. And keep your ears peeled. Or is it keep your eyes peeled and your ears open? Anyway, I'll put it all over Facebook, uh, apart from uh, YouTube. So um, you'll definitely know. I hope so, anyway. So over this side. There we go. Hopefully you saw that. Right, so let's do a bit of sky. This is not a complicated painting, by the way. It's a little bit... Um, in fact, I'm hopefully making it a little bit easier on myself because uh, I've got to keep my energy up and um, everything is just so exhausting. Not a lot of fun. Okay, so I think there's a bit of sky for you. Let's see what we can get in there. It's going to be dead simple. What sort of sky should we have? Should we? It's certainly one where uh, you can expect more snow. Question is, do I want colour in it or do I just want white shapes? And I think, I don't think I'll think about it. I think I'll just pick up some paint. Oh, I did say I would show you my palette. I'm going to show you my palette before I do anything else. Obviously the brushes I'm using, a bit of green on that one, dark blue on this one, and uh, the sort of white, slightly greeny, greyish colour. It's just a bit of green and the grey mix with a bit of white thrown in, that's all. Uh, my palette knife, obviously. And um, this is the bit I'm just mixing the colour up here just to um, get something on the sky. I don't know quite what will come out of that yet. Um, but it'll be fun trying to figure it out. So let's just go in a bit closer on that so you can just see the sort of colours I'm using. Okay, so that should be back in focus, I hope. Um, so this, these colours that I'm going to put in the sky, it's just... Uh, I don't know, it's just sort of like, let's just see what happens. As I said, just a few shapes. Almost... Treat it as if you're just cleaning your palette knife. Scraping some paint off your palette. Putting it on your painting, just like so. And trust me, interesting thing going on there. I think it might be a hair. Now, of course, this technique makes things like that, a piece of cake, to fix. Just scrape it off. Don't, don't, don't fuss over things like hairs on your painting. Just scrape them off. Chuck a bit of paint on the top, like that, like so. And then see if it looks like a cloud eventually. It will, trust me. Let's get some... Um, let's get a little bit of light blue in there. So this is royal blue that I'm adding. Uh, hopefully you can see it should pick up. So you've got royal blue here but with oil and ultramarine added and then on the top I'm putting royal blue without any ultramarine just so that it can sit there quite a lot. I mean that's a, that's a reasonable amount of paint there. Let's just run a bit off the edge of the picture. squeaky easel I've got. And a little bit more, I think, just to run it off the edge of the painting. 
So when I'm, I'm after, um, I don't know what I'm after. <laughs> I'm after interest and w without the agony of, oh my goodness, am I going to get it right? Because if you do this enough, you'll, you'll learn to know that, yeah, it'll look okay. And, you know, try and achieve it without breaking a sweat. There we go. So yeah, it's just a bit like cleaning the palette. Take the paint off the palette. Shove it on the painting. Push it around a bit. And it'll look like a sky. There we go. So let's think what we're going to do in the sky over on the right hand side. This is the bit that freaks people out sometimes. This is brown. Okay, nothing wrong with brown. Some people will say, why on earth are you putting brown in the sky? Well, if you want, if you want to wonder about it, go and look at my um, Illusion of Detail painting. It's the one, that, if you go to my YouTube page, it's the one that's uh, the featured video. This is the one that's had millions of views. And the, the comments, there are loads of comments, and quite often the comments refer to I saw you putting brown in the sky and thought something like, I don't know the exact wording people use, but they thought I'd completely lost it and gone bananas. Uh, but then it sort of, something happens. It just sort of comes together. And uh, that's all I'll say. Just go and look at it if you want. See what you think. And the more you do it, uh, this sort of sky, the more you will find that you become a sky watcher and the, the more you will see that brown does actually appear in skies. There we go. Nice brown sky. So now what should we do? Let's get the big brush, this guy, and what I'm going to do is just sort of um, smooth it down. Find a place where I can actually hold it without getting fingerprints all over it. There we go. And um, Just see what what comes out of it. So there we go. Bit of brown in the sky. I'm going to put some white on top of the brown now and I think you'll find that's quite an interesting effect. So clean my palette knife, pick up a nice dob of white and put it right on the brown. sitting on the brown. Clean the brush a little bit more and then just pull that around like so. So brown actually becomes almost like a sort of pinky colour because brown is basically chocolate red. Think of it that way. And of course, this is a painting that is completely imaginary, but I guarantee if you look at enough skies, you will see skies that color at some time in your life. Now, the good thing about this, I haven't spent hours and hours and hours with a little brush smoothing the sky. What I could do, if there was a particular structure of sky that I wanted, I could position the whites in a, in a more um, 
precise manner and get a similar effect but with you know more of a structured sky um, I'll just show you that quick, quickly and by that I mean supposing I wanted a bit of cloud here like so Well, I don't actually have to use the big brush. I can just leave it like that if I want, but uh, I'm not going to because I'm going to make it just cover a little bit more of the sky. Let's come across here a bit. So the light's catching the snow, it's catching the clouds. And it's going to catch a bit more cloud up here. I could, I could leave it like that, I suppose. Do I want to? Not sure yet. Let's have a little bit there just before we get to the edge of the painting, just to keep the attention in the painting. And I think we'll just sort of carry this theme on a little bit across here, just the odd. A bit of light hitting the clouds there. I'll show you that. Yeah, cool. Now, um, can I just put a few? What am I going to do? I have something up there, I think, because why not? Eventually, you you know, the more you do this, the more you start to notice that clouds will just start to appear on your painting. Um, what else should we do? Still got quite a lot of white paint left on my palette here. So maybe I should um, play a bit more. Let's just have some interesting things going on in there and there. What else should we do? Keep it up here. A bit too much of a line through there. I think that needs to be um, broken. Let's just connect that through there a bit. Right. So we've got we've got um, all kinds of interesting things going on in the sky there. Now, you, as I said, you could leave that like that, uh, but I'm not going to. I'm going to just give it a very gentle uh, bit of smudging. Just check my camera, make sure you can see everything. You can. Good. Um, yeah, I'm just going to do a, a few very gentle touches here, just to sort of <clears throat> Take the edge off it just a bit. Hardly touching it, of course. And one or two more. Very, as I said, unbelievably gentle touches. So that it's hardly making any contact at all. It's just touching the paint, not the board. Okay, so uh, what I'm thinking is, um, with the palette knife, it's just a few more marks on the ground. So we've got a, a bit of a curl here. Just check, you can see that, you can, good. Um, and I'm thinking maybe I should just have a few marks. Just to try and make the ground look a little bit more interesting. And in fact, uh, not just the ground, I'm going to um, do a little bit more work on the tree line because I think at the moment it's just uh, it's looking a little bland. So 
uh, let's increase some of these contrasts here with a little bit more snow effect. It's a bit like making a movie, isn't it? It's, um, making up the background for a movie. That would have been an interesting job. When I, um, when I left college, I, I did a couple of short-term jobs. I, um, I worked briefly for what was called, I don't know whether it's still going now, but it was called the Schools Museum Service um, in the UK. And it was a, what it sounds like actually, they, they um, produced um, relics and samples of works of art like po um, pottery and would design cases to put them in to send them out to schools so that even a complete netwit could take the thing out of the box and put it back in again without breaking it but but uh, they managed somehow anyway um yeah i used to paint um backgrounds for exhibits like sort of jurassic park type stuff before way before the movie came out of course because it's a long time ago and um that was quite interesting i don't think i would have want, wanted to spend my, the rest of my life painting backgrounds to exhibits in museums but it was fun at the time and um so here yeah i'm just going to sort of go a little bit over the top i think doesn't hurt sometimes, as long as you don't go, well, I mean, how far is over the top? Um, you work on something until it looks ridiculous, maybe that's the, uh, that's the, the trick. So I'm going to, I'm using a sort of grey, a greyish colour here, it's interesting. And I'm also going to use this brush, which is one of my, my few uh, expensive brushes. And I'm just going to try and come up with a colour that suggests uh, trees from a distance that have lost their leaves. Don't know whether it'll work. I think no, eh? And uh, I think we'll just put in some shapes of trees along the line here. Because I want to bring the bottom of the mountains closer. And these, this brush... It's just the right shape for simple tree shapes. Hopefully that's that's uh, giving that a bit more interest. It's a it's a colour that's quite hard to describe. I'll tell you what's in it. It's um yellow ochre, Payne's grey, sap green, bit of white, and a little bit of royal blue. Bit of a bit of a mess, really, but it sort of works. It's a, it's almost like a camouflage green, which I suppose would be if you're painting trees, wouldn't it? So I'm going to put these simplified tree shapes just along here, and then I'm going to put a bit of snow in between them. And then we'll be pretty well, I think, at the end of the video. A lot, a lot more work along the bottom here yet, but I, I just felt that um, I'd finished a bit too soon. to look a little bit more gutsy I think let's have a little bit more up here just a few it's only it's only um it's a hint so what I, what I do to get a hint of something like this is keep some of these light areas just put something dark next to it and it starts to give it a little bit of buzz 
and I think a few more. I think a bit more dark in there. So for the dark, uh, I'm going to use sap green and Payne's grey. A little bit more Payne's grey than green. And I'm not really adding much in the way of oil to this. So a few shapes. In fact, we could have a few um, conifers in there, just a hint of the odd one or two. I'm not a I'm not a big conifer painter. Leave that to other people. Just a just a little hint of something there, maybe. And a few going up the hill. Oops, it's a bit big. Let's debiggen it. There we are, debiggened. So there's a, a little bit of a hint of some kind of evergreen. And that's probably all I need to do there, I think. Right, so a little touch of snow in between uh, those shapes that could look interesting. Let's see, let's take, let's take some of the snow. Oops, let's do a bit of an aggressive lump. Then let's just, just put the old little bit up in there. And in fact, it could go up there between the trees. So while I'm doing this, let's uh, let me just tell you the stuff that I usually talk about at the end of my videos, and that is that I do Zoom classes. And uh, if you want to come to a Zoom class, uh, I'll put a link in the description below. And they're always good fun. Got quite a nice regular bunch of people, and. Um, we, I, I paint for an hour and then we'll do Q&A afterwards, about half an hour. I used to go on sometimes for quite a few hours sometimes, up to two or three hours. I don't, don't really like that there. I'm going to have to change that. Um, but due to my recent health problems, I'm going to have to cut it down a little bit. So that I just do the, what I originally advertised, and that's about half an hour. Because by the end of it, I am completely cream crackered. And um, need to rest a little bit. There we go. I'm hoping that um, things will get better. If I, you know, I've got no problem uh, with, with watching my diet, I can't eat uh, salt. I've got to really cut back on salt. But that was never really a problem. Uh, certain foods have salt in them, I think, anyway. So i just got to restrict them a bit. And also, um, certainly not add salt. But as I said, I never really had a problem. Not uh, not too addicted to salt, and I'm working on getting my coffee intake down a bit. I, w I have one cup of coffee a day in the morning, and um, I'm going to cut that down to a half a cup, which is a bit of a shame because even though I only 
uh, tend to have one, well I do, I only have one cup of coffee per day. It's like, uh, it's a bit of a high point. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure I'll find some other vice to fill the gap. So, right, back to the um, important stuff. Does that look like a stand of trees going up the side of a mountain? I think it does enough. Um, after all, I'm after the illusion of detail, as usual. And I think um, I, might, I might put a bit of snow between uh, some of the trees, just a little touch with a palette knife. And um, let's see how that will look. So we've got the main ground here with snow on it underneath, which I'm increasing, uh, and then we get we get the um, little flecks of snow that are just visible between the trees just up here. Just gives it that extra little bit of little bit of depth. So you can imagine you can see through actually through the trees. And I think that's all I'll do there. Let's just go and have a look at the other side of the picture. there's something there that's bugging me a little bit and one thing I don't need is to feel bugged. Now, that's better. That's what I was after in my roundabout sort of way. Okay, so I'm going to finish off the foreground, then I think we're done. And uh, this is going to be quite fast, I think, because I'm not going to do an awful lot to the foreground. I'm just going to bring down a few shapes, like I started to do before, and just get some snow on the ground, because I think it was just lacking. I can't have too much snow, but I suppose I'm sure people out there will disagree with that. So, so a little bit down here. How's that looking? That looks that looks snowy. And then I think we're done. <clears throat> so, as usual, I hope you um, hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learnt something. And um, there we go. We're almost there. Just a tiny little bit more up on the hill. And there we go. And uh, the, the next painting I do, um, trust me, it'll be a lot sooner than the um, time we've had to wait for this one. And uh, Maybe I'll get off snow and back onto normal landscape. And uh, I might do a um, back to basics. They're always good because there's always people asking for them as well. It seems to be a popular, popular theme. So there we are. That's me done for the day. And uh, as I said, hope you enjoyed it. If you want a Zoom lesson, go and have a look in the info box under the video.
and you can contact me um, via my website just go to the contact page on my website and I'll be there waiting for you anyway thanks for watching and um, see you in the next video bye for now